Well, hello again. Uh, we're back to our little bellows thing where the air conditioning air comes out. You know, I kind of figured, uh, I think, how a lot of rust got up underneath the dash. This was for air conditioning. This is what comes out of here. Cold air. And it was coming up through these holes and going up underneath the dash and condensing, causing rust. I'll bet you money that's what caused that because it would go from hot to cold, hot to cold, and you would get... Down in Arkansas, they use air conditioning a lot so in their cars, so it created a lot of condensation under there. That's the only way, it's the only way that could have gotten that much rust up underneath that dash on the underside of those panels that I had, you know, on, you know on, that I had to de-rust. If not, well, that, that, that was my best guess. Anyway, uh, I wanted to, pa patching this, I, I wanted to make it as simple as possible. This is not a complicated thing. And uh, I, didn't want, I did not want to use dryer cloth on cloth. It would have been better for a speaker type material from the old vintage radios. So what I did was, hmm, I have a brilliant idea, another one of my brilliant ideas. <laughs> I went down to Hobby Lobby and I asked the lady in the material department, I said, do you have uh, material that looks like blue jeans that, you know, like I could put on the knees of a pair of blue jeans? And she says, yeah, yeah, yeah. She took me over there and she had this in a package on the wall, two pieces of it. And it's iron-on stuff. Now, I'm not going to iron it on, but this is exactly what I was looking for. Two pieces of it. What we're going to do is we're going to cut it in strips, and then we're going to lay it in there. And then we're going to glue. Well, first we're going to lay in some glue. I'm going to use this E6000. It's supposed to be uh, industrial strength adhesive. <laughs> we shall see. But I'm going to cut it in strips, stretch it apart a little bit, and uh, lay it in there. And then, uh, according to this, you got to wait. If you really want it to be glued really good for a long time, you got to wait like 24 hours. Uh, I don't think it'll take that long, but if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. Uh, we'll start out with a couple of pieces, maybe. Maybe up in here would be the first place to start, just to see if it's going to work. Because there's not much of a hole, it's just worn down to the layer underneath. It's cracked. All right? The whole idea here is to keep the air coming out of the air conditioner from continually again going up underneath the dash and maybe rusting everything okay so let's let's give it a shot well it's the next day and last night before I hit the rack I chopped off a couple pieces of this fabric and I glued it onto this board uh, one side down the other side down to see which one I should use the best for gluing onto the uh, this bellows thing over here and it turns out, I guess, it doesn't matter either way. Boy, that stuff is really tough. You can't get that crap up. That is industrial strength. And uh, the only thing I don't like about it is it just glue dries white. But, of course, I took all of that into consideration, of course. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this baby here and stretch it out to where, you know, to where it's stretched out to where I can get the... Uh, the pieces of fabric that I cut for it. I have them all cut right here. We're just going to glue it all of them at once and get it over with. And now this this here didn't quite dry 24 hours. You're supposed to let it dry 24 hours, but it's on there. You can see how how secure it is. So I think I can stretch this out with a single piece of string. This ought to be interesting, huh? Well, that worked pretty good. I just hooked a piece of string onto the front, ran it underneath the table all the way around. Brought it up the other side here <laughs> and fastened it to here and just, just pulled it until she was stretched all the way out. Well, there we go. Now all I have to do, there was a hole in the fabric right here. I went ahead and used it, and I'll patch that last. But uh, I'll actually have the patch on there. I just won't glue it and patch it till, until the last part, until it's all done. But this one here will lay across there like that. You have to put your cement on both pieces of fabric. Uh, I'll put them under the underside of this and and the top of this part here press it on down then I'll just lay in a couple more all the way down until I run out of fabric I may have to cut some more now that I stretched it out it may not be quite wide enough I'm glad I bought plenty it may cover it I don't know I'm just going to play around with it until I get it all glued and then we're just going to let it sit right here all night out here in the cold weather Okay, we've got our strips in. The glue's not dry enough to hold them all the way down nice and flat yet, but I'll come out and babysit them every 15 minutes or so until they finally lay down completely and then the glue dries. This is only stage one. 
Stage two will come after everything is dry, probably tomorrow. Stage uh, two will be much easier, trust me. And it will be a completely sealed bellows. You know, this thing, uh, it, ju it doesn't really expand and go back and forth. You just get it out far enough to connect between the two ports. The one on the dash and the one on the, uh, on the firewall. Nothing to it. All right, now for the second part of this. Uh, we're I've already done part of it earlier and it's hardened up real good. I'm putting liquid tape on it over the top. So, you know, it's not necessary, I guess, but I like overkill. And I'm probably going to put another gob of it on each one of these. You know, I had to use a paper or a clothespins here to get that lip to go down into there where it would dry. So it'll sit like that for a while longer. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put this on just to show you how it's done. Once this old white glue dries and everything's solid, just go ahead and paint that stuff on there. It makes for, this stuff is so versatile. You can use it for all sorts of things. I use it for patching uh, radio speakers when I fix radios, or I used to anyway. <laughs> She's had a chance to dry all night and it looks really good. Nice and solid. I like that, okay? Now, you know, but we're not done yet. Now, I still have to do this. Uh, I'll do that after I take the strings out. But hey, we're not done yet, and I'll tell you why. When you have a situation like this, you got, and, and, you know, the rips are in one area. The bottom side is in perfect condition. The sides are in good condition. Why Why did it rip right here in this area? you got to find out. And I'll, and I'll tell you why. It was mice urine. As you can see, all the discoloration here. Remember, we had meeses up in there chewing on our vacuum lines. And uh, they urinated all over here, and it made the fabric weak. Now, this has all been washed and cleaned with soap and everything in this area. So what I have to do... So I have to get some more. I, we need to straighten this up. I just can't put it back in there like this. It'll wind up uh, ripping again anyway because the fabric is weak. So I'll take some more of this uh, uh, liquid tape and we'll just cover all the areas that are, you know, you know discolored. And get that straight all the way down to here. It looks like it looks like even some down in here. We're gonna have to put a lot of that on. I'll probably wind up using the whole bottle, but. It sure beats having it rip again, me have to take it back out. And once we, I'm not going to put any more cloth on it, it's not needed. Just the, uh, just the liquid tape and we'll have a nice solid surface like this. So let's get that done. I'm trying to work it into the fibers the best I can. I really want to work it out here. I just don't want to lay it on top. You know, we got to work it in best we can. I'm going to have to do around the corners here. Then old urine boy, some pretty powerful stuff from mice and rats and whatever. Big rats really play havoc with uh, this sort of thing. Small mice is okay, but you know, from the amount of chewing that was done on the vacuum lines, I don't think there were that many mice, but it only takes two or three to cause a problem. And now we're gonna let this dry overnight again, or maybe not overnight, maybe this afternoon I'll be able to take it all apart and finish up this last bit. Before we rip out the heater uh, coil in the heater core and that big black plastic box, I wanted to point something out that was brought up to me by one of our good subscribers. I said that I believe this, on, we're on the back of the uh, dash now, and I had previously said in another video that I, I thought this was the uh, CVR, the constant voltage relay, and I liked where it was located because most of them are located on the back of the instrument cluster. And he wrote and he said, no, 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 this is probably the delay relay for the seatbelt light. So when you start your car, on the overhead console, there's a red light that lights up and says seatbelts. And this thing here, the contacts will close, giving you that light. And after they've heated up after a certain amount of time, probably, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds, then it'll pop open and the light goes out. So that's what this is right here. Now, and uh, it, I should have realized it's a lot bigger <laughs> than the CVR. Let's take a look at the CVR now. Now this is the uh, instrument cluster. And on the back of it, we'll spin it around. It's a pretty heavy little booger. On the back of this thing, you will see the actual CVR, okay? They almost look alike, except the one I showed you earlier is about this long. So that's it. There, that's what uh, provides the required voltage to the gauges on the uh, 
instrument cluster. I think it's like I think it's like six volts or something like that. It's a pulsing thing. It's got a set of contacts in there. From what I understand it, they close, they heat up and open, close, heat up and open after a certain amount of time, so they don't burn out the gauges. At least that's my take. By the way, those uh, CVR constant voltage relay, they make reproduction ones, but according to Nick Pepe of Vintage Thunderbird Repair, he said they suck. He said uh, they're just not anywhere near as good as... So try to keep the old ones and try to use the old ones as long as you can. All right, let's get down to business on this uh, heater coil. Now we're going to have to remove some screws. We're going to have to remove this one here in the bottom, right there. One on the top, up in there. I don't know if you can see that or not. Can you see that screw up in there? Probably be better without the light, yeah. And then we have three down the center. Now according to Nick, these three down the center are a different thread than the ones, the other ones on the outside. Now this thing has been off before. You can bet on that. There's a screw missing over here. <laughs> and these don't look like... these. I don't know what... <laughs> let's take one of these screws out and see what the threads look like. No, no, let's, let's just wait. Anyway, and you've also got to take loose this cable. This is a mechanical you know, wire inside of a wound cable to operate your vent. The air that comes down out of this big round thing down here. And uh, let's see what that... Oh, God, of course, jeez, I knew this. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Now, this box is connected to up here where the, uh, <laughs> where the air flows through, and it's got a rubber thing that, can, that joins the two together. Look at this. The rubber thing's all shot and gone and dried up. Ugh. You know, it just never, ever fails. Never fails. Okay, let's uh, let's get this wire off first. I'll have to take this screw out, and then this this thing here will have to be pulled off with a pair of pliers, gently, like back and forth. It's just one of those push-on caps. I don't know if you can see that there. See, it? It's just a little push-on cap. Well, that cable screw came out real easy. Just came right on out, no headache at all. But this little cap here looks like a little hat. Looks like a little, like a Mexican sombrero. <laughs> little tiny one okay what we're going to do is I sprayed a little bit of W or not WD I could have used WD-40 but the PV blaster was closer <laughs> so I grabbed it you know anyway we're gonna go ahead and then we're, I'm gonna work be careful with this you know don't don't put a ton of pressure on it and collapse it just kind of go around the outside edge I'm around the brim of the hat with a pair of pliers and just kind of spin and pull and spin and pull and it will and don't bend this rod either you got to kind of go easy. It'll eventually come right on off of there, okay? You'll see. Well, there it is. She popped right off. You know, you got to take your time with it. Don't damage it. Spin it back and forth. Pull, spin it back and forth. Hold this rod with one hand to keep it from bending. Now we're ready to take the cable off. Now that we got the screw out, and that cable will slide right off. See? It's got a little coil on the end. See there? Nothing to it. Okay, now we're just going to have, let's take the screws out on this thing right here. Now, in order to get that screw out down there, this, this thing here will have to be removed. Because it's held on with those screws right there, those two screws. We'll take those out. This will come down. I'll get this last screw out. Then we'll move to the outside of the car. Actually, we'll take it off. And then there's four bolts, four nuts in there we got to take off first. I'll get to that in a minute. Now, in Nick uh, Pepe's video, he said these three screws right here, this one, this one, and this one in the middle, were of different threads than the ones on each end. You know, the two over here and the two over here. But when I took them all out, this is what they look like. I don't know if this is what he's talking about or not. This is what I had. He said they never are right. <laughs> also, I've run into a snag. Now, these things right here, this, this plastic uh, cable protector is fastened to it. I took out the two screws. What this is is a downward pipe. See, your hand, I could put my hand up inside of it here. Okay. It's a downward pipe that comes from where the air conditioning comes out. There's one on the other side over there also that comes out of that side. You can see the hole for it right there, I think. Let me see here. I want you to see all this. This is very important. 
may come in handy someday for someone who owns a, a Thunderbird. You know, see the other outgoing hole right there? That, that, that vacuum line is a little bit in the way, but it goes down to that downward sloping pipe. What it does is it blows cold air from the air conditioning on the passenger and the driver's side. Now I haven't quite figured out if it all this I haven't quite figured out if this door also handles heat. I don't think so. You know, this door opens up, big spider in there by the way. When I ran away, he got scared. <laughs> it's a giant spider. I think it's a wolf spider. Anyway, I haven't figured out this door when it opens up handles both heat and air air conditioning here. I don't know. I'm gonna check with him on that. Right now I need to make a video of this and ask him in his video he said in order to get that plate off here you got to get this off well I can't get it off is he talking about just that or the entire thing I don't know I'm gonna have to check with old Nick we'll find out and I'll get back with you well it's the next day again and I have answers according to I got together with Nick Peppy and he said that well the only thing that comes through this big door here is Air conditioned air. That's it. Nothing else. No heat. And of course the air conditioned air comes in and goes down these two pipes on both sides, I guess, to cool your feet. Yeah, to cool your feet there, I guess. <laughs> anyway, and he also said that those machine screws that were in all these holes, you know, don't worry about it. He said he doesn't know why they just didn't go with machine screws to begin with. He said just put machine screws back in. So I will. I'll probably get new ones. And the last thing was, what holds this on? He said there's a screw in the bottom over here where my hand is underneath here and then there's one on the top up here. He said you'll probably be covered with tar and you won't be able to find them. Won't be able to see them. Well he's right. You guys see any screw down in there? Let me zoom in here. I'm going to have to dig around which means I'm going to have to take this vacuum motor out. We just about luck it be behind it. You see any screw down here? I don't see any screw down in there. I don't know. All right, for all you die-hard Thunderbird owners out there, I had to take the bolt out of here and then move this diaphragm back. And once I was able to do that, I could take this. I got the screw out of the bottom, but there was no screw in the top. The only screw in there is this one at the bottom right here. It slides. There's little things there that this thing goes in and slides down. A couple of fingers on each side. There's nothing on the top. Just a bolt, just a small bolt on the bottom. That's it. Now I can go ahead and give you a better look here. See those, see those fingers sticking out right there and right there? That's what it slides down on and it catches on this one on the top here on my finger. It's bent upward. It's bent upward here and it settles into that one. Then you go ahead and put your bolt in. And uh, let me see, now this resistor right here, this red resistor here, that's for the uh, speed control on your fan, uh, on the uh, dash, you know, high, low, and medium, I guess, I don't know. And I'll have to unplug that plug right there, because that's, that's the plug that goes to it. So either you can either take it off of here, or take it off of there. Alright, I got this plug unplugged. And the screws out. Oh, my goodness, it falls off all by itself. Now, see, that's the kind of cooperation I like. I like that kind of cooperation. Now, it won't come out, of course. Let me go ahead and work on that. <laughs> and those are your coil resistors on the back. This is, this must be a three-speed fan. You know, like the, one, the small one is one, the large one is one, and then the combined is the, like another speed. I don't know. I'm not going to worry about it. It's off. Boy, we got a lot of cleaning up to do on this, don't we? Phew! What a mess. Tons of rust everywhere. I want to finish this video up by getting this box out for you. I didn't expect this video to go this long, but, you know, what am I supposed to do? Here's our radio, our uh, heater core sitting there all pretty and leaking like a sieve. It rusted a giant hole in the floor down here. It leaks so bad over the years, nobody ever fixed it. So, what do we do now? Well, we got to take four nuts off this fan. This one here in the bottom left, bottom right, and there's two more at the top. One there, and one there. We get those off, let's do that next. All right, that's off. Now we have to go outside the car. 
from the outside of the car, the last two nuts to come off are this top one right here, this long one sticking out. And there's one just like it down below underneath the motor of the fan. There's 7 sixteenths, we'll get them out. Well, actually, this one had three nuts that had to come off, not two. Okay, we're ready to get this baby out of here. Now, according to Nick, all I have to do is pull it forward and down. You've got to get it off these studs right here, I guess. And uh, I guess you got to get to get it off the studs through the firewall, too. I don't know. Let's see if it'll even budge. What is going on here? That thing's not moving at all. Hmm. Tell you what. Until next time, this is John. Never mind. I guess that uh, I had the wrong two nuts. I have to get that one out there and the one down below there. See, you can see it down below that pipe down there sticking out, the bottom pipe right there. I got to get those out. I was thinking that for some reason I was over here thinking that these had to come out. But uh, my bad. Okay, those two are out. Let's try it again. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'll bet you it comes out now. Let me work on it. Well, there she is. She's all down. And I found another uh, <clears throat> vacuum motor down in there that uh, Nick mentioned it, but I couldn't find it. It was behind this box, that's why. And there's one just like it on the other side of the car under the dash. So it's not too bad down in here. It could be worse, I guess. A lot of rust on this thing here. I'm gonna have to get the. Uh, I'm gonna get that fan motor out. Between now and next uh, video, I'll get that fan motor out of there. We got to clean and that motor. Does work by the way. I hooked it up to 12 volts one day, and uh, the wires were just kind of sticking out there, you know. So I hooked them up, and sure enough, the fan came on. There's our heater core. It's held in with four screws, one on each corner. And I'll get to that next time. But, we're going to clean this baby all up. We're going to make it look pretty, nice and pretty. I got a, my big problem right now is I, I, don't, I don't know what I'm going to do about getting this, this boot that fits between here and the top of this thing right here. I don't know. It's going to be fun and games, I guess. Let's wrap it up here. This video is twice as long as I want it to be. Anyway, everything is done here. Everything is fine. It's solid as a rock. It's not going to go anywhere. I put liquid tape on the inside as well uh, to where that cloth was sticking out. I don't know if I can see it in here. You might be able to see where that cloth was. I wanted it to be covered with liquid tape on both sides. And it's kind of hard to even spot it now. Maybe that's, that's, I think that's some of it right there. See where that cloth came through? I gave it a good coating. I wanted it to be... Uh, Waterproof on both sides, sealed on both sides. You know, there's no sense in doing the top if it's going to deteriorate from the bottom, too. No, no. Anyway, then I spray painted it with flat black paint. I wanted to use fabric paint on it, but fabric paint, gosh, it's like $15 a can plus tax just to be used once. I don't think so. <laughs> but anyway, she looks very nice. So I got a lot of inputs on that. A lot of, you know, people contacted me, even on emails, wanted to know how I plan to fix this. Well, that's the way I fix it. And it, it, it flexes like it's supposed to, okay? Not a problem. That's the way I fix it. Until next time, this is John.